Holy smokes. All right, guys. So Titans season four, part two. We got a lot to talk about y'all because there's some good. And as usual, there's quite a bit of bad, but y'all welcome into the channel. The name is Leo Rydell and this is Geekly Goods. And hey, if it's your first time we covered the MCU, DCU and beyond guys, today we are covering DC and talking Titans season four, part two. That's episode seven through 12, which drop on Thursday, April 13th, guys. And I'm just going to be honest here. I have mixed feelings, very mixed feelings, a little more on the mess side, especially for this being a series finale. I can excuse the last season finale with Donna coming in and a big middle finger to the second season and basically her being zapped by lightning and not having to do much. But here, when it feels like the season, or I'm sorry, the series is supposed to close, I thought maybe there would be a little more effort and it doesn't quite feel that way. Guys, let's start out with the good things though. Honestly, I gotta admit, Titans always shows up with those suits, y'all. The suits look incredible, and we get to see the debut of Robin, Tim Drake's suit, and we also get to see Brother Blood's suit, and guys, the suits do deliver. But a big gripe I have about the suits is unfortunately we don't get to see them that much. However, what we do get to see, the suits are great. That Robin one looks so cool. Looks like a mix of various different Robin costumes, a little bit of Dick Grayson here, some Tim Drake, and even a little Jason Todd in the costume. Guys, I really love how the Robin suit looks. Also, Brother Blood suit looks awesome too. And of course, the rest of the Titans always look suited and booted, great from head to toe. The suits always show up. Also, I want to shout out Tim Drake. I thought that he got a great character arc throughout Titans starting in season three when he starts getting mixed up with the Titans and is so interested in Batman, but more so Robin. And they really take that and bring us through an evolution of this character throughout the next few seasons. We get to see Robin realized and that was such a breath of fresh air because it feels like all the character arcs that go on in the show just are always so like weird and off-putting and... I don't know, not that they're terrible, but they're just some of the development that goes on in the show is a little so-so. However, I really did like that character as well. Also, gotta shout out Superboy. I like where they went with the Lex stuff. I was liking them digging a little bit deeper into that, but stay tuned. There's going to be some things going on with that, but I do enjoy that he embraced Lex a little bit more here. And I thought that that was cool because it's like, okay, he's Superman and Lex Luthor. So it's a cool pathway for his story to take. You know, he's basically in the middle of the road with two pathways opened up. So I really like that. I really like the duality that's going on with that character a lot. And I like where it's realized here. But honestly, guys, we got to talk about these stories that go on in Titan. It's always so much going on that doesn't need to happen. Honestly, Beast Boy gets a little stiffed here with his story involving the red from the comics. I think, unfortunately, it just looks visually jarring. It's not explained well. It wasn't really explained well in the comics. So I can't really knock them too much, but I think they need to do a little bit of differentiating that in the live action because it just did not come across lore-wise that understandable. You've got these weird characters popping up, but I will say this we got some great cameos happening here. like there are some a1 cameos that happen this season so or at least in this part so definitely stay tuned i'm not gonna spoil one of them has already been talked about online so you should if you're following titans and these dc shows you'll know exactly which cameo i'm talking about that has been the, the showrunner has said which date the episode is gonna drop so you already know what character that is also other cameos that were just I did not see coming so I really liked that about the season but of course the stories that go on just really drag the show back and not all of the acting is that great I really think they fumbled the bag with the brother blood character I think there's so much to that character and I really liked the introduction of Sebastian giving him of course that kind of beat down by the system but took things too far and I kind of liked where they were going with that character and they completely fumble it we barely see him in the suit I'm not gonna get too far into spoilers but I think that they really did not do a great job with that character the character writing for that just came to a screeching halt in part two in my opinion and the 
decisions that were made with that character this I did not like but I am a fan of that actor and I think that he does really a good performance I was worried already when we barely saw him in as brother blood in the first part so unfortunately there's not a ton of, of that but getting on to some other things, there's just so many plots going on at all times. And some of them are strong. Like I said, the Superboy and Tim Drake stories are really strong this season. Some of the stuff that Dick and Corey are going through is very reminiscent of other shows. You will understand as soon as you see it. I'm not trying to spoil here, but uh, I was very reminded of a very recent comic book show. <laughs> I'm gonna just give you a hint. It's Marvel and it started out the D plus shows. That's all I'm gonna say. But just some weird twists and turns going on this season. But I think the biggest writing error is this is supposed to feel like a complete story. And they complete the story so quickly that there are still questions left on the table. There are things that happen that I've still got some questions about. But they rush to the ending. Unfortunately, this is something I see in the Marvel Disney Plus shows as well. They bulk us with all these different characters and mini plots and, you know, misdirect us from this central plot. And unfortunately, it creates a rush to the ending. It's almost like you're running a marathon to get to the finale. So it just doesn't work. It's murky here. The writing just does not work. So I'm going to really need them to dial back all of these plot lines going on and just really give us one neat thing unless they want to do the Doom Patrol route. But this is the last season, guys. It does end. And I will admit, while I have so many issues, don't even get me started on the visual effects. Let's talk about that really quick terrible that's all i gotta say but while there are so many issues i'm bittersweet about it and i don't know why i think i really enjoy maybe hate watching this show but at the same time deep down there are some things i really enjoy so honestly ah, there are just some things i really like and some things i really dislike about this show a lot that i really dislike but man it's so hard for them to touch that season three with red hood that was by far the best titan season that third season was excellent in my opinion yes i know people are gonna come at me for that one go ahead at me at twitter at geekly goods let me know but i loved that third season and then just this fourth one the first half was okay i could see the cracks starting to form and i just i think we kind of fumbled a little bit here it's a little meh leaves me wanting more simply because the conclusion was so empty and it was so rushed and we had to conclude all these storylines so quickly and it made me question does the show even know it's ending but guys it has been real titans is over this is it this is the conclusion the finale of the series unless they come back for another season which i don't know i wouldn't be mad but y'all gotta let me know your thoughts down in the comments how you feeling about titans season four part two guys i had to give a rating for titan season four part two Y'all, I'm gonna go ahead and go with a 6 out of 10. Unfortunately, there are just some really mediocre and bad things that happen. But the ending, at least I will say the very ending, while rushed, is at least satisfying. So, while it was mediocre, it was also satisfying to see some good stories come to an end. But guys, let me know your thoughts down in the comments. And hey, if you're new on the channel, hit that subscribe button down below, baby. And we'll see you next time on Deeply Goods.